Good morning, everybody. This is Tanya Weekly coming to you from Peddler's Den, and we have a really fun project for you today. We're going to show you how to make dramatic clouds of snow using Peddler's Den stencils. Now, if you have, have uh, pre-purchased the kit, you got one of these. It includes your instructions. It includes one cloud stencil. It includes one snow stencil. It includes rubber. Now, for those of you who may not be familiar with using unmounted rubber, you need to trim them, and the best way to trim them is with a scissors that looks much like this. This is the Kai brand. It's one of the brands that we sell. But the best scissors for really trimming your, your rubber closely are going to look a lot like this. They're going to have a short, really sharp detail blade so that you can really trim your rubber close. Now, if you look at mine, I'm going to lay it here on the darker paper so you can see. If you look at mine, you can see that I have trimmed very, very, very close, and I've even jogged in a little bit. I imagine that at some point in your stamping career, you have had either cling foam or wood-mounted stamps that you tend to get ink on the edges of the excess rubber. No matter what you do, you get ink there. You're forever trying to watch it and wipe it off. One of the beauties of unmounted rubber is that we no longer have that problem. If you ink this up and you stamp it and you have a little bit of extra ink here on the edge, you just go back with your scissors and you just trim that a little closer. Problem solved. So I trim my rubber very, very closely. It avoids problems in the future. Now, because this is a work along, and because it may be new to some of you, we have done part of the work for you to try to make this easier. This is a practice blank. We've done um, all of the uh, stamping for you so that you can use this just to practice your technique on your clouds and your snow. This is our Peddler's Den 100 pound coated two sides semi-gloss paper. It's our best selling paper. So what that means is that the back side is the same finish as the front side. So if you screw this up, you can always flip it over and you've got a brand new piece of paper that you can work on. So this is meant to be your practice. Uh, uh, my, thought pad, my thought process behind this was if you're trying to work quickly and you're trying to work with me, um, you don't want to screw up your, your final project. So this is a, um, a practice one for you. Now you can always just practice your technique on the back before you flip it over and you begin on the front of this. When we get to the actual project, we have taken the liberty of pre-stamping our birds and our rocky shore. Now our rocky shore image is one of our original images and it is our best selling image. So I didn't want to build the price of this into the kits when many, many, many of you already own this image. However, if you're new to our line and you love the project or you love the image, this is called Rocky Shore and you can, uh, you can purchase it on our website. This is our flock of birds. It is also one of our original images. It has appeared in lots of different samples. It's appeared in lots of different kits. Once again, we didn't want to build the price of this into this project because so many of you already own it. And then, of course, you've got your papers and what have you to assemble your project when you're finished. Now I'm going to put this all back away. 
And we're gonna take a, a quick look at uh, our instructions. You can see that we've given you a photograph of different intensities and if you own your kit, you can see that this one actually has splattered snow on it. When we splatter our snow, we use the Doc Martens Bleed Proof White with uh, the Tim Holtz Distress Splatter Brush. Some people will tell you to use a toothbrush or something else. You, Those will work, but I have found this tool to be the best one I have used. It gives me more control. And although you may not be able to see the snow on this one very well because of the video and, and the colors and what have you, here is a different project that we have used it on. And on this particular one, I wanted to splatter a lot of snow. And you can see that you've got, you've got big blobs and you've got little blobs. And, uh, you know, for me, it looks very realistic. If you're not familiar with Doc Martens, I don't know what they make this stuff out of. It is water soluble, and yet they call it bleed proof because you can paint it over dye based ink or you can splatter it over dye based ink and it won't allow the color of the ink to liquefy and bleed through. So that too is available on our website. That's just um, a variation of what you can do with this project. It isn't actually part of the project, but I like to bring as much value as I can to show you different things that you can do. So let's get started. I am going to take one of uh, my pre-printed blanks. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to work a little bit on the clouds. Now there is an add-on kit, and some of you may have purchased it. The add-on kit includes the three main colors of ink that we used. And I say the three main, obviously you have to have black, but everybody has black, right? This is our Robin's Egg Blue, our Vintage Mauve, and our Granite Gray. These are the other shades we've used. The add-on kit includes a piece of our Grippet and includes one of our round sponges. Now, when I am stenciling clouds and snow, this is the tool that I like to use best. I cut mine into pie-shaped wedges. So you can see that out of one sponge, I'm going to get six pie-shaped wedges, which I can then use for six colors. <clears throat> and yes, if you're using dye-based ink, you can rinse these out with just plain water sufficiently when you're finished so that you can use them with slightly different colors later. Having said that, I do try to keep yellow just for yellow and some of my lighter colors, I try to keep them dedicated to just the one color. Now I'm going to flip, no, I'm not gonna flip that one. I'm gonna take a different piece of paper and I am going to demonstrate a little bit about these cloud stencils. If you purchase the stencil package, you get several different cloud patterns. For the purposes of this particular project, you get just the one. Now, if I want a little, if I want to really control where I'm putting my color, I pinch this, which makes this surface area very small. If I want to put a wider uh, tone down, I let it loose and I use the whole large surface. We're gonna do both. So I'm going to show you how, I'm going to pick up some blue and you're gonna feel like you don't have a lot on there. And my clouds are, we don't want them to line up in straight lines. So I'm going to tip this a little bit. And I'm going to concentrate some of the color right along the edge. Now I tell people when I'm doing this, many times I get more color on the plastic than I do on the paper. 
But when you move this away, you see that, you know, even though it doesn't look like there's much ink on that, you get quite a lot of ink. Now I'm going to pinch it again, but this time I'm going to shift this over a little bit and I'm going to slant it. And I'm going to come along and I'm going to try to do the same thing. I'm trying to concentrate the deepest color in the deepest crevices of the stencil. Okay, is this beginning to look like clouds already? Now, even with only one stencil, if you wipe this surface off, because it has ink on it, and flip it over, it still changes up the pattern a little bit. You can make your, your clouds any shape you want. I like to mix it up. I don't want my clouds to look like they're marching across the sky in, in straight little lines. You can make very wispy clouds, or you can add a lot of color to make them deep and dramatic. Every single time I do this, it's a little bit different. Okay, so you're getting the idea here. Now, if I want to go back and add just a little more tone, I'm going to reposition my stencil, and this time I'm not going to pinch and I'm just going to add just a little bit of tone. Now look at the difference here to here. Just a little extra tone. I'm going to put this here. I'm just going to add a little bit. And this is one of those techniques that if you try to control it too much, you're going to have trouble. You have to more or less be willing to let the art take you where it wants to go. So hopefully you can see that we're just, we're getting some tone in there. See how, how that looks? I hope you can see it. I know that my studio lights tend to wash the color out a little bit. Now, for the purposes of this tutorial, we're going to switch over to our Vintage Mauve. Now, this is looking pretty good, and you can make beautiful clouds using just one color. You, you can make the, the deep tones, and you can have the light tones, but today we're going to add some of our Vintage Mauve. Now, if you're at all familiar with the color wheel, you know that when you combine um, a pink and a blue, you get lavender. So we're going to pick some of this up, and we're going to bring some pink across here in an effort to get some deep lavender tones. Can you see the difference there? Now this is beginning to create drama. And if you take the time, you can use several different colors, and you can make your clouds lots of different um, patterns and textures. I do recommend that you try to leave a little bit of white. The, a little bit of white just along the edges tends to really enhance it. And you don't want things to look too uniform because things in nature really aren't uniform. So you see where I'm going with this? Okay, so now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to I'm going to not pinch my sponge. I'm going to let it pop open and I'm just going to come back and I'm just going to add just a little bit of tone. I don't want to lose all of my white, but I want just a little bit of tone. And of course, you can you can control that a little more if you want to pinch it. But this is the technique for creating the clouds. There's, there's lots of cloud stencils out there. Most of them are very, very straight edged and very, very loopy, which in my opinion is less realistic. 
in your kit today, you have one cloud pattern. When you purchase the big stencil, it includes one, two, three, four patterns like this, and it also includes a cloud bank, which, of course, this gives you a totally different look. But if you like what we're doing here, it's fun to have all the different profiles because that way your clouds really do have different shapes and, and what have you. I'm going to see if I can bring this up a little closer to the camera so that hopefully you can get a little better look at it. Like I said, I have studio lights and I know the studio lights do wash things out a little bit. Uh, I, I don't know if you're getting a lot of um, glare or not. But let's just take a quick look at some of the ones that I have done. We're going to take a look at this pair. You can see that these are tighter clouds and they don't have as much drama because they don't have as much deep tone. Over here, these, this cloud is um, spaced more loosely and I have put a lot more depth, a lot more drama in it because I've, I've added more dark tones. Uh, likewise, when we get to the snow, you know, here I have used a lot of the, the deep gray and it gives you a, a more drama. Over here we've used less of that and it's a little more wispy and a little bit lighter. There is no end to the fun that you can have with this technique and these stencils. It just goes on and on forever. You can try different uh, color combinations. One of my favorite ones that I've done is this one. And it's kind of big. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn it like this. It is wrapped in cellophane. I just pulled it off of an artboard. But I used one of Creek Bank Creations um, Slimline Scallop Dies. And I got to tell you, I really like the scallop shape on this. You probably will notice that the trees just kind of cascade down, almost wrap around, and then I planted one up here too. I love the composition of the slim lines using the ovals. So this die set is available from Creek Bank if you like the oval format better. So now we're going to move over to our real project. And we are going to start working on it. So I'm going to go back to my blue sponge. Now, if you like this and you want to do more of it later, the um, birds and the um, shoreline can be put in either first or last. Um, I tend to put the shoreline in first because I like to define my horizon line. I like to know where the uh, sky is supposed to end and where it meets the, um, the ice. And I'm going to kind of um, go through this quickly because we've already done a tutorial with this. And instead of going back and adding tone, you'll see me pinching, doing the deeps, and then letting it loose and adding some tone. That's a little bit of a, a time saver if you want to do it that way. But if you ever want to go back and add more colors or you ever want to go back and add a little more drama and depth, you just line those stencils back up and go again. The inks that we're using our are our making a scene inks. Our ink line is a little different than most, even though it's just a you know an ordinary dye ink line, because we have designed our colors in color families. So you can use them very similarly to how you would be taught to use alcohol markers like Copics. You can um, you can blend and, and mix, and you've got your color families to work with. We have a lot of the very, very pale colors, which again, if you work much with Copics or, or those techniques, you probably have already realized that the most valuable colors are the lightest ones. 
and not everybody actually has those. Let's see. Let's do a little skinny over here. Like I said, every single time I do this, it's it's a little bit different. And that is what makes it so addictive. Now, when I get down to the bottom here, I didn't want to mask. So when I got down to the bottom here, I just, you can use a paper towel, you can use a stencil. Um, but you kind of want to keep the ink off of the shoreline here and just kind of dab a little bit of color in. Something like that. Now, going back to these samples, you will see that on this one, I've just faded it right down to the rocky shore and I've left it. On this one, I tried to concentrate a little more of the pink near the horizon line. Those are fine details that you can do whichever way suits you best. So I am going to set my ink pad aside, go to my mauve, grab my other sponge, and we're going to go back up and we're going to kind of do this again. And it doesn't have to be real defined, and you don't want each one to look exactly the same. That's part of the beauty of trying to have a more realistic uh, pattern, more realistic clouds, is that they don't all look exactly alike. We, we have variants. I tend to like my edges to be just a little bit darker. So sometimes you'll see me working on that a little bit. I'm going to pinch this a little harder. And I am really getting most of my ink right now on the plastic because I'm trying to do some real deep lavender tones in the crevices here. Then I'm going to let this pop open a little bit. And it does, you don't have totally pinched and totally open. I mean, you can, you can adjust this by pinching to whatever level you want. And some of these things I do unconsciously. Um, I try to mention it as I'm making these videos. So some of you may have liked the blue by itself better. And if you do, then, you know, by all means, this is your scene. So do it whichever way suits you best. If you're at all familiar with the color wheel, it will help you better understand what colors to layer, what colors to combine to get the results that you're hoping for. Let's see, this one I think I did, I think I started, yep I did, I started um, like here. And then I extended it over here like this. 
See, most of the time I don't use the entire width of the stencil. Most of the time I'm only using little pieces of it to get different patterns and to create different angles. Okay, now we're going to try to come down here on the bottom. And I'm just going to kind of, instead of tearing paper towels, I'm just going to kind of add this to give me a little bit of a template. And I'm not pinching right now. I'm just laying down a little bit of tone. So what do you think? That's not bad. Now, I think I'm going to put my ice skater in because that will help define where I can put my snow. I don't want to run out of room for my ice skater. So I'm going to take my ice skater and I'm going to ink her up. And this is a freshly cut stamp, so sometimes your brand new stamps don't accept the ink real, real well. So I'm always inking and then examining and inking and examining and making sure I don't have excess ink on the edges. And then most of the time I actually practice to see if I've got a pretty even amount of ink. And tap, tap, tap very, very gently. I don't want to rock. That'll get me uh, ink on my edges. Now, we have a, an ice skating skiing set. And um, if, if you are interested in other patterns or other ice skaters or whatever, you may want to take a look at it on our online catalog. I always press straight down. I try not to rock. Sometimes, of course, I make a mistake. And I give the ink time to migrate from the stamp to the paper. All right, so now I, I have a better idea where, where I can put my snow. So I'm going to take my snow pattern. And... You can use blue. You can, you know, make your snow pattern blue. You can use gray. You can use whatever you want. Today we are using granite gray. And I'm going to pinch this again because I want to uh, really kind of control the amount of ink that's going on here. And I am putting more ink on the stencil than I am on the paper. Your eye will complete patterns pretty easily if you if you put the suggestion out there. Okay, so there is a suggestion of snow. I hope you can see it with the studio lights. Now, even with my snow, you know, snow banks tend to drift in in different ways. So I don't want everything to look the same. So again, I'm only using part of the stencil here. But I'm going to come across here and try to have a slightly different pattern. You can always go back and add more. Remember that. We can always reapply our stencil and we can always go back and add more color. So I tend to build up a little bit gradually, make sure I like where I'm going. Something like that. Let's see, how about, how about something like that? You can see that this is, is not an exact science at all. This should be very relaxing. This should be something you don't have to sit here and, and think about. Okay. Okay. 
Maybe something like that. And I think I'm going to kind of leave it at that for the moment. Um, now I can come back and I can add my trees. I can put them right over the stenciled portion. So we're going to ink this up. And the first one I want to be over here on the edge. And if you can tell, I'm actually slanting this off the paper. I'm actually slanting it off the paper here. Press firmly. Try not to rock. Okay. I like to lay my, my stamp rubber up and I like to tap on it unless it's a tiny stamp. Now we can use the same, the same tree but lower to come over like this. Okay. Ink this up again. Let's see. Now, if you if you use just a small amount, it kind of looks like a bush or brush. So we're going to put some of that down here on the, the bottom. And we're going to just um, kind of overstamp that a little bit. Okay, not bad. All right, let's go ahead and let's put our deer in. Now the deer is a pretty small image and this again is a brand new cut stamp, never been inked and so I want to make sure, you know, I, I examine it and you can see that there is still red showing through, which is not uncommon with a brand new stamp. We want to make sure we, we get the ink to adhere. And then I always like to practice it on practice paper, make sure that it's looking pretty good. Now my concept when I when I designed this was that you've got the figure skater out here skating around by herself and you got the deers here and one of them is kind of looking at her. So that's why I positioned her slightly to the left and the deer slightly to the right. Now you can just plop these deers almost anywhere. And there they are. Okay, so you have the little um, ice striations that help to show the ice. And we want to scatter some of them around on the ice. Now, because the skater is a solid, you can actually go right over her. Now, we have uh, the small patterns here. If you stamp this over and over and over, it begins to look like maybe you just stamped it over and over and over. But you can rotate it around so that here the short one is on top. And here we're going to actually cross her body. And the short one's going to be on the bottom. I'll flip this around a little bit. You want to try to keep them all more or less parallel. And you can add as much or as little of this as you want to. It just suggests that there is ice there. All right, now I'm going to go back and I'm going to see about adding a little bit of blue to my snow. So I'm going to go back and find my blue sponge 
And of course I have the, the stencil here. And I'm going to try to line this back up a little bit. And there we go. We have a little more drama on our snow there. Can you see that? I always have to find where, there we go. Line your pattern up. Now we've got some more drama. All right, so that doesn't look quite finished. So you can take either your gray or your blue, depending on whether you want more blue tones or whether you want just more gray. And now we can uh, we can go back and, and we can add just a little bit of um, tone. And again, you actually do want to leave some pure white, especially in snow. If you want to put your stencil on to do this, you can. It'll help you preserve that white. But see now we're getting we're getting more of a gradation of color. This one I always have to there it is. I always got to find the right. contour. But see how that begins to, with the different values, it begins to really um, give it some dimension. But you don't want to cover your white up, especially on your snow. And like I said, I am pretty fond of having my um, edges just a little darker. So you'll see me working on the edges just a little bit to deepen them a little bit. I think I want just a little bit more up here. And let's see which Now the ice itself is going to have a little bit of tone. So now I'm just kind of coming across the ice. You can do this with gray. You can do this with blue. But by toning this a little bit, it makes your white snow look whiter. See how that works? Now let's compare it a little bit. Let's compare what we've got here to some of the ones we've done before. Okay, so if you're looking at the snow here, I've actually uh, added more tone here. I actually added a hint of the pink, and we can do that too. I tried to leave the ice just, you know, a little plainer because we want we like that contrast. Our clouds today, um, 
are brighter. This must have been a, a more overcast uh, day because we have a little more brightness to our clouds today. But I hope by now you're kind of seeing how you have a lot of control over how this really plays out. I'm going to uh, grab a little bit of my mauve and I'm going to come back and work on my snow a little bit more. I'm going to add a little bit of mauve. And I, I'm not leaving it wide open, but I'm not pinching it tight. I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to put just a little bit of tone down. It's almost like there's a little bit of reflected light going on here. But throughout all of this, the thing that is consistent is that, <coughs> excuse me, I have a vocal cord problem and lots of talking dries them out and makes me want to cough. So what do you think? Did that hint of pink help a little bit? You can use any colors you want. If you want to put a little bit of pink in the ice, you can. I think I'm going to come back and put a little bit of blue in the ice. And this is just ever so lightly toning it. And a lot of the purpose of this is to make that snow look brighter and whiter. Remember I said you can always go back. So I'm going to come back here and I'm going to add just a little bit of gray along this edge. I don't think it's quite as defined as what I want. I'm going to pinch hard because I want to control this. And there you have it. So what do you think? Now if you want to color the rocks you can my concept is that they have snow on them, and so, you know, most of the time I, I leave them white or I may put a little reflected color on them. But like I said, my concept is that um, there's, there's lots of snow piled up on them. So you can, um, <coughs> you can take a little glitter and you can add to it. You could um, work with uh, Doc Martin's bleed proof white if you wanted to but at the end of the day I really kind of like I kind of like what I got here and this is what we have here now one thing I like better about this composition is I added more of the trees and the brush so what we're gonna do is we're gonna instead of doing a formal mask I tore a paper towel And I'm going to lay it right here, which kind of um, echoes that hump. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to add some more trees or, or bushes, whatever you want to imagine this, the, the bare branches anyway. So let's put them right about here. And there you have it, kind of growing up out of the snowbank or behind the snowbank. And I, I think maybe we could use a little more in the front here. So let's, let's put a little bit here. I think that improved the composition.
In some cases, you might even put some branches in the upper corners as if the tree branches are, are hanging over the viewer's window here. In your kit, it shows several different versions of this. Each and every one of them is using exactly the same technique. And then, of course, we used a lavender mat because we're trying to create lavender tone. And we kind of felt like the, the lavender mat just kind of pulled that all together. And then we're using our chambray blue cardstock. Now, if, if you have a kit and you have loved this and you want to make more, we do sell uh, what we call a paper pack. The paper pack is available for purchase on our website. You'll get 10 each of the chambray blue, 10 each of the orchid layer, and 10 each of the 100 pound coated two side semi-gloss cardstock. This project is designed to be used with just a standard business envelope. So we did not include envelopes in any of the kits. It's not in the, um, the project kit and then it's not in the slimline paper kit either. You can get just a standard business size envelope and this will work fine with it. Now we, um, we do have a discount code. So those of you that are watching, there is a discount code. So I have printed this out so that you can refer back to it. Our website is www.peddlersden.com. The coupon code for this event is PDSLM20. And if you shop our website and you use that discount code, it will give you 20% off of regularly priced kits and, and the make and a scene stamps. We also have other company stamps on there that um, are not subject to the discount. But you'll get 20% off of kits and the make and a scene stamps. The coupon code will expire December 1st. Now, if you've enjoyed this, I encourage you to follow us on Facebook. We have a private Facebook group called Makin' a Scene Rubber Stampers. We would love to have you join. Uh, of course, we have a business page, Peddler's Den. From our website, you can subscribe to our e-news. We promise we don't fill your inboxes. During the time we have lots going on, you might get two or three emails in a month, and then you might go two months and not get any. I don't believe in filling up everybody's inbox, so you don't have to worry about that. And we never share our list with anybody else. We are primarily known as scenic stampers, but our stamp line is suitable for all kinds of non-scenic or more traditional stamping as well. We have a lot of samples. We have uh, kits that are designed... Um, to appeal to people who really don't want to do masking or scene building. So we encourage you to check those out. We do have a YouTube channel. I didn't add that to the, to the, um, <laughs> to the sign here. I'm sorry. <clears throat> but our YouTube channel is, uh, www.youtube.com forward slash C forward slash Peddler's Den making a scene. Now, making is M-A-K-I-N. And normally we do M-A-K-I-N apostrophe. But here's the deal. We are a small mom and pop company. We manufacture our own stamps and other things. I would love to hear from you. You can always reach out to me. Uh, you can email me at Tanya, T-O-N-Y-A, at PeddlersDen.com. Or better yet, you can pick up your telephone and call me. The office number is 815-498-3429. I usually answer, but um, when I don't answer, my husband answers. 
And I love to hear from my customers. If you've got questions or if you can't find something, please call me. I love to hear customer feedback. I love to hear from my people. And I would love to hear from you. So thank you for joining me today. I'm not sure where to put all of this. I guess I'll just do it like this. Thank you for joining me today. Once again, my name is Tanya Weekly. I am with Peddler's Den, and I hope to hear from all of you soon. Thank you. Goodbye now.